Hey, what's going on guys? Today, I'm super excited to introduce a brand new pack and workspace to you. It's a pack filled with some of the cleanest looking titles, effects and graphics, elevating your videos to a professional yet sleek look. So whether you're launching a new product or reviewing the latest gadget, this pack has something for you. Let's dive into it. So once you've installed M Workspace from the installer, you wanna head over to the effects tab and search that in here. Here you'll find all the effects, titles and transitions. So diving into this pack as a general overview, we have eight different sections that we'll go over. We have the curve screen and placeholders, which come under the effects tab, the backgrounds all the way to typography, which are titles, and lastly, workspace, which is the transition section. So we'll get started in the largest section in the pack, which is everything that comes under the titles. These are super quick and easy to use, and I'm actually gonna start in a different order from the top and go straight to the miscellaneous, because once you can get your head around this, everything else is a breeze. Just gonna close this so we can see the title names, and the first one I'll drag on is the M Workspace Balance Bar Chart. So as you can see, this gives us a really cool interactive bar chart. So to start manipulating this, first thing you do is click on your layer and head to the right in the inspector tab. And then if you're on a 4K timeline, you do want to click this 4K quality box as this ensures the correct quality and sizing. Next, we'll head to the top and we have these in and out points. And these boxes allow us to switch on or off the transition when the layer starts and ends. Now diving into how to control the look of the bar chart, we first have the content controls tab. And this is the overarching control center where you'll manipulate how the entire graphic looks. So that's manipulating the position, the scale, and the rotation. And then to reset any of these, you can just double click on the setting name and it will snap right back. Now diving into how to control the actual look of the bar chart, the first thing we do have are these title controls. Now to identify which title is what, if there is a case where the text isn't as obvious of what it is on the screen right now, Q3, it's the only Q3 there. However, there are times where it's not as obvious. You can just toggle on and off this button here and that will highlight which one it is. If I take this off, I can see it disappeared. So I know this is going to operate the Q3 and that will be the same for title two. And then these titles will work in a similar way to your normal text box where you can change the font, the sizing, the colors, the positioning, everything you need to really get the look you want. Then we have the global chart controls. Now this is going to control everything below the two titles. So if I move this around, this will control just the chart opposed to the content controls where it controls the entire graphic. Again, I'll just double click that to reset it. Then we have the horizontal line controls, which is controlling the description here, which says average currently and the line that is coming across. So we can toggle that on or off. We can change the text, the font, the exact same things we do have on the previous side of controls, but we also have the line controls. So we, again, we can take that on or off, move that around, manipulate the thickness, the size, all these different options. So really can make a look how we want. And finally, we have the vertical line controls. So this vertical line control is arguably the most important part of this title as this will control all of these lines and these different bars. So first off, you want to control how many lines are visible. So if I drop this to five, you're going to see it instantly goes into the middle because it is set to be evenly spaced in the center. Now, if you want these bars to be a little bit wider, you can just slide them across. And then from there, you can make them a bit thicker. That's way too much. Let's go like that. And then from here, you'll notice that there's no more purple bar. You know, the one that was highlighted that when we had 10 bars. So if I bring that back to five to get that bar, let's say I want the bar number four, I will just scroll down. We see highlighted one, two, three, four. And there we are. And then this can obviously be adjusted to whatever text I want as well as changing the start and end points so you can see how this bar chart is going to move. And then if you feel like the text is too close to the bar, you can just go all the way to the bottom and you're gonna see this description offset, which is going to allow you to have a bit more space. And then finishing up inside this bar chart, we do have these drop shadow controls. All this is going to do is add a slight shadow behind your graphic, just to make it stand out from the background that much more. Now it does look a little bit weird right now because the lines are currently at 50% opacity, but if I was to go all the way, now you'll see it's much more of a subtle difference it makes opposed to the strange look when it's at 50% opacity. So whether you're using lists, toggles or CTAs, you'll be able to control it through the inspector tab. One more thing I'll touch upon inside this miscellaneous folder are the few titles that allow you to import your logos or other photos. So I'll take this button one for example, but this is the exact same for the three widgets at the bottom. As you can see this section here that says your logo. So for that, I'll head into the media controls, hit browse, then going through the files, you can just enter in your logo or any other image that you want, and that's it. Now you have the full capabilities to customize this in your liking, and it's as easy as that. So now we'll head back up to the title to get started with the backgrounds. These are things you can add to create some interest behind your text and graphics without the distraction of video. So you can use this Aurora background for a cool Northern Lights look with a little grain giving it that microscopic feel, 
or you can be a bit more minimal and just have the border, which kind of reminds me of the new Apple Intelligence, or you can just go full on with these pink clouds. Now I can personally see an abundance of use cases for all of these backgrounds, but let me run you through how you can get the most out of them. So if we drag on the EOS background, the first thing you'll notice when we go to play it back is that it doesn't, or at least it's pretty slow to play back, and that's because of the grain controls. So I'll actually first toggle this off, dial in the rest of your settings, and then you can turn the grain back on. So we'll go up a tab into the background controls, and the first thing you're gonna see is the rotation rate. So that's gonna control how much the colors are rotating. And to control the colors, using these little triangles down here, they each represent a different color. So if I click on this last one and change this to a yellow, you're gonna see that's where the yellow gradient starts to come in. And then if I choose the second one and make that pink, you're now starting to see that pink start to come through. And then referring to the rotation rate like before, depending on how you move the slider, will determine how the colors will come out. Then you have the background controls, and this, as it said, is going to control the color of the background. But be aware, the lighter the colors you use, the harder it will be to see the gradient. For example, if I change this to white, you're gonna see this washes everything out. Even if I'm at gray, everything just kind of disappears. So for the best results, you actually want to keep this black, then the vortex power and angle are going to control how the gradient actually comes in. So if I was to drop this power all the way, you're gonna see this rotate round to the right. If I was to change the angle, you're gonna see it swirl quite a bit more. So there's so many ways you can manipulate all of these different backgrounds that you kind of have like 10 backgrounds in each one. And then once you've got your gradient sorted, that's when you can now start to add in the grain. But be aware, this will be very taxing on your machine. But don't let that stop you from getting creative of how you set these backgrounds of other videos and various titles to create a cool sequence. Next, we're gonna get into the curved screen section inside the titles. These will give you some really cool titles and backgrounds that are pretty similar to the ones we've gone over already. However, they have this super cool curved distortion effect that gives your graphics a little extra spice. And the best way for me to illustrate how to control these is using this frame background. So I'll first check the 4K quality box, then go into the curved screen controls as you now know how to control every other tab. And the first option we have is the toggle on and off the curved screen. And I don't really see why you want to turn that off, otherwise it's just a regular title, which I guess is also fine, but we'll keep it on for now. Then you have the curved screen position. So dragging this left and right, you're gonna see that I'm moving across. Now, this is very different to what the content controls would do when you would slide that left or right. This is actually manipulating where the title is going to be on that curve. Then you have the curve screen offset, which is controlling the size of the curve. Then you have the curved strength, which is going to control the level of distortion. So this frame is the easiest way to visualize what's actually happening with this curve, as when you grab something like the list, for example, playing around with those curve controls is a little hard to see exactly what's doing. So now that you've seen how it works with the frame, you can then apply the same rules to all of the other graphics. The main thing to note when you're using these is to make sure that your curved screen settings match. Don't have the settings of the frame background different to the settings of the list. So right now you can see how the curve settings are slightly different, so the effect doesn't really work. And now that I've matched the settings, you can see that the effect is a lot more believable. The intro section is super simple, but a great way to dynamically add some motion and interest to your logo placements. It works in the same way that I showed you before when you hit browse in the inspector tab and add that logo in. But you also have the option to change it from a logo to text. So that means you have even more title variations to play with. This pack really is the gift that keeps on giving. And the last section of the titles tab is the typography. Again, a truly great way to add a clean titles into your sequence that give it a modern tech feel. These are great ways to add in text to your product launch videos without having to manually keyframe the text coming in. My personal favorite is this kinetic title too, as you can essentially turn this into an interactive subtitle. And then how this works in terms of speed is that the text will evenly be distributed across the length of the layer. So if the layer is there for longer, you can see that each word is staying there for a bit more time. But if I now add a lot more words, even though the layer is the same length, you're going to see it's flicking through the words that much quicker. So play around and see what great effects you can make. But how I would personally use this, as this is something I use in my own content, is go into the settings and change the composite mode to difference. Then you get this cool text effect that interacts with the footage. So taking off the in and out points and putting a really dynamic clip, this is the effect you get when the text is set to difference and is interacting with the background. And now we'll head over to the effects tab, kicking things off with another curve screen section. Now the effects section differs from the previous because you apply these effects directly onto your footage as opposed to placing them onto the timeline. So starting off with the curve chart, you can see that it gives the actual footage this curve effect. And controlling this is very similar to how you had it before, except you have even more options to be more specific of how you're dialing the look. And then something you need to know when controlling these three effects is that they operate on a fusion clip basis, giving you the ability to have multiple clips on the screen at the same time. So if I also drag this tile grid onto the footage, you're gonna see we have this three clip effect, but our footage has just been duplicated. And that's not what the effect is intended for. We're supposed to have three different sources of video in each of these different windows. 
And how I know that is because in the inspector, it says built for fusion clip with three sources. So I'll go ahead and delete that clip, get my three sources, then I'll highlight the clips, right click and select new fusion clip. And then from here, I'll drag that tile grid onto the clip. And now you can see we have that effect working perfectly. So the first thing I'll do is take out the in and out animation. So we do have it straight away. And then if you do want to adjust the order of any of these clips, all you need to do is right click, open in timeline, and then you can adjust the layer order that these clips are in. Additionally, you can go in the inspector tab and actually control how the clips look. So using the offset, you can control where the footage window is. Using the footage position, you can control the actual footage inside. The scale controls the zoom of the footage. So I'll zoom this all the way out so you can see the full clip. And then we also have the rotation, mask height and width, and the mask roundness. I'll also do the same with drop zone two and three. Next, we have the placeholders, which the first two and last are going to work in a very similar way of requiring a fusion clip. But these are great ways to show off multiple clips to keep the video interactive while saving hours from keyframing and layering multiple clips. On the features placeholder, when you first use it, even with the fusion clip, you won't be able to see the other footage. Don't be alarmed, that's just because the background is switched on. So you could technically use this one without a fusion clip as the background will just stay black. However, if you toggle this off here, you'll then see the other clip. And then like before, when I said about stacking these, well, if you don't want the blurred footage behind and you also don't want it black, you could actually place one of our backgrounds inside the fusion clip and now you have the best of both worlds. And then to finish off, we have the transitions. These are pretty easy to use where you drag and drop the transitions between the clips and adjust the length of it by dragging this box here. Then the transition automatically adjusts to the time it's been set to. And just like everything else in this video, you can fine tune and adjust the look of these in the inspector tab until you get your desired result. Just like I mentioned before, there are so many possibilities in this pack. So really push out the boundaries and enjoy creating. So I hope this overview has been helpful for you to better understand how to use this pack. If you have any questions at all, please drop them down below or head to our website at motionvfx.com. I've been JC and this has been your M Workspace Overview.